Hello, everybody. Um, Michelle Sellers, Cascadian Dog Training in North Vancouver. I, yes, we are back. I'm um, going to see if we have people hopping on. And if not, I am going to go ahead and start with the questions that I've had from the following week. Yeah, there has been um, quite a bit of emailing back and forth with people, um, just mainly telling them that I can address their questions on here. So I'm excited to get started. Uh, if you know anybody that does have issues with their dog and they need some help, go ahead and hit that share button, share this with them, share it on your timeline. Um, let's get those people help, shall we? All right. So, um, something that Elise wanted to know. Uh, she said, so something new has popped up with our four-year-old golden retriever since these windstorms have been wreaking havoc on the neighborhood. All of a sudden, when out on walks, Lacey is terrified of plastic bags blowing around. Um, Elise, I'm guessing that Lacey is your dog? No? Um, must be. Why all of a sudden? Yeah, it's super embarrassing when she blows up at the stupid plastic bag. When it happens, we try to calm her down by stopping and putting her in a down stay, but she can't seem to snap out of it. Even after the bag is long gone, she's still on edge, and then she's growling at everything. Okay, so Elise, um, just see here. This back. Okay. So you're saying this is something new that has popped up for Lacey and she's four years old. Okay, so I think what's happened is, um, you know, we've kind of, we kind of don't take into account when something might startle our dog and then create a problem later on, right? So you say that all of a sudden when you're out on walks, she's terrified of things blowing around. Well, dogs don't really understand the wind right so dogs can't make the connection that um there's wind there's a plastic bag it's blowing it around they just see this thing as startling them and being really scary so i was actually explaining this to someone else um using the analogy of a garbage can um so it's the same kind of idea if all of a sudden a dog is standing beside a garbage can and the garbage can blows over well that's really super scary right it can startle them they don't know that it was just windy and the wind blew over the garbage can and that's what startled them um so now you're left with instead of the garbage can it's a plastic bag okay so you have this plastic bag that's blowing around and that's really terrifying for lacy and what's happening is she doesn't know she can't make sense of it so she needs you to guide her through it and the way that we're going to do this you said that she blows up at it so you're going to need an interruption the second that um, she starts to look at it, okay? So the second she starts to zone in on it, you're gonna need an interruption, and then you're just gonna keep walking. So hear me say this a lot with a lot of different issues. Um, and you had said that, I hope you don't have a ton of plastic bags blowing around your neighborhood, by the way. That's something that I just thought of now. Um, Why all of a sudden I explained that? try to calm her down by stopping and putting her in a down state. Okay, so that's a great idea, you know, in theory. And I think it's what a lot of people would do. So, but here's my issue with that. When something is scaring your dog, whether it's rational or not, the second that you stop moving, you validate everything that they are scared of. Okay, so you're validating all the reasons that your dog thinks that plastic bag is scary by stopping, you're actually saying to them, yes, you have every right to be worried about that. Okay. And that's not at all what we want. So, excuse me. What I want you to do is I want you to just move her through it. Okay. So you're going to give her that interruption on the leash and you're just going to keep walking really slow. Hey, Chloe, how's it going? Long time no see, honey. Um, just keep her walking through it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, sure. Those plastic bags are scary. They're not, but um, Sheila, excellent. I'm just gonna finish this um, this one and then I'll get to you. Post what's going on with Mocha, okay? Put it in the comments there and um, I'm gonna get to you right away. Um, so don't put her in a down stay, okay? 
Because what you're doing then is she's in a down state, which yes, I mean, typically she'd be, she should be more relaxed. Um, usually in a down, dogs are in a more relaxed state of mind. But what you're actually doing in this case, because she's scared of something, you're actually, you know, actually warranting that, uh, that that's something to be scared of. So I just need you to walk her through it. And if you think that it's just a tough day for her, there's nothing wrong with just turning around and going the other way. The most important thing that I want you to do is walk really slowly during your walk. Okay. So when you walk really slowly, we keep um, the resting intensity of the dog down. Okay. So if you think of a scale of one to 10, um, one being she's really relaxed, just kind of dopey walking around and 10 being after she sees that, that plastic bag blowing around in the wind, right? So she's super heightened. She's all the way up here. What we want to do is we kind of want to hover between a one and a three, because if she's walking around and she's between like a seven and an eight, you only have that little gap up until 10 to, to bring her back down. Right. But if she's hovering around a one or a two, you have all that space in between before she actually gets to that heightened state, which is a 10 to kind of snap her out of it and bring her back down. So if we can keep her there, then uh, you're going to have a lot more success in keeping her calm. OK, when it comes to those plastic bags, walk really slow. The other reason we walk slow is it's hard for dogs. It's really hard to walk slow. It's not natural. And I have to focus on what they're doing. OK, so at least I want you to either email me back or I'd like to um, uh, answer here in the uh, in the Facebook comments. Okay, um, Sheila, Mocha is starting to counter surf and snap at me if I take stuff from underneath him. Uh, all these things are brand new. He was not like this two months ago. Okay, let me close this. Okay, Sheila, so I have some questions for you. Um, first of all, how often is Mocha crated? I want to know. Um, when he's not crated, when you're home, uh, how often is he in command? Um, place, downstay, whatever it is. Um, is he being free fed? So there's those three questions. So I'm going to leave you with those. I'm going to um, wait for answers on those. So several times a day crated. So is he ever crated when you're home? Answer me that. Okay. Several times a day. Yeah. So hello, auntie. Okay. So he is created when you're home. Um, what percentage of your day? And the reason that I'm asking is because, um, generally when I do structure lockdown with my clients, um, the dog is crated for 50% of the time that you're home, they should be in the crate. Okay. So it's just going to become part of everyday life. And I think part of what's going on is that you do have a three dog household, right? Like that's a lot to manage. Um, now I can't even remember what other ones I asked you. Um, so he's created, oh, how long does he stay, uh, kind of like in duration of, um, of structure, like place or downstay 30 to 40%. Okay. That's for the crate. Okay. I want you to raise that to 50% of the time. Yeah, I know they're siblings, and I think that's a lot of your issue to be quite honest. Um, raising dog siblings is really difficult. Um, because you have this fight for, you know, pack hierarchy with a normal pack of dogs, but you start getting into the sibling stuff and it can get really, really tricky. Are they all from the same litter? I got my giant soda stream bottle here. I want you to up crating, like increase crating of all three dogs, 50% of the time you're home, and then don't have them out together. I want you to rotate them. Oh, Sheila, I got something game changing for you. Food is a free bag, come and go for six years. That's gonna change tonight. 
Okay. No one else has issues. Yeah, it only takes the one, doesn't it? Just to completely, um, no more free feeding whatsoever. None, um, none of my clients do it because it causes so many issues. I think a really big thing that's going on with Mocha and what happens when we free feed is that we take away the dog's food drive. So you start to see all these behaviors and all these anxieties kind of pop up in other places, okay? Your homework for this week and for the continued life of Mocha and your other dogs, you're going to put the food in, put the food down, timer, five minutes. Five minutes is up, you take the food away. Now you said that he's got some resource guarding issues, so you might wanna use a broom and not your hand. Keep a leash on him. Okay, even if he's still eating it, I want you to take it away. Because, hey Tom, um, because what's happening with Mocha is that that food is losing its value, right? And it's giving him entitlement. The entitlement, you're now seeing counter surfing. Yeah, Tom, you're creepy, I see you too. You're seeing the counter surfing, you're seeing snapping at you, okay? You are no longer, for Mocha, you're no longer like this source of life for him, right? You're just kind of part of his pack. He has no food aggression. Oh, okay. Oh, take stuff from underneath him. Pardon me. Okay. Then I misunderstood that. Um, so no food aggression. That is absolutely fantastic. What I want you to do then is, let's say this again, food bowl down, five minutes, Whatever he doesn't eat gets taken away. He does not get fed again until his next meal. No treats, no table scraps, nothing. I'm not opposed to them, but nothing right now on your purse or iPad. You need to be keeping the leash on him in the house. Don't reach under him. It's dangerous. Let's get all this other stuff sorted out. He's in his crate for 50% of the time that you're home and when you are away and at night, okay? This is non-negotiable. The rest of the time that he's in the house, 25 or when you're home, pardon me, 25% of that is structure. So he